Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let me tell you why you shouldn't use the free email address that comes from your cable modem or DSL provider. I get a lot of questions by email and I'm amazed by how many people have email addresses that are from their cable modem or DSL or even mobile internet provider. It's not a good idea to use these email addresses. Let me explain why. Well, the first and most obvious reason is portability. Say my email address was gary at mycableservice.net. Well, what happens if I change to, say, using the DSL provider in my area? Or what happens if I move to an area that had another cable provider? I'd lose that email address forever. There's no way I could keep it. So I would have the problem with having to update everybody with my email address. And what happens if I use that email address to sign up for different services like online sites and different things. I would have to update all those and if I forgot one and then lost that email address I would have trouble reestablishing service. So it's not a good idea to have an email address with somebody unless you know you can take it with you anywhere you move, anywhere you go no matter what internet service you're using. Another reason is these email services usually lack a lot of the features you could find elsewhere. One of the most common ones that I find is people that are stuck using POP email. POP email is old fashioned email where one client, say a computer, is expected to pull the email off the server. Now what happens if you have an iPhone and a computer? Well the iPhone gets the email first and you don't see the email on your computer or vice versa. A more modern way to do email, it's been around for a while now, is IMAP. And I'm amazed by how many of these free ISP email services only offer POP and not IMAP. A third reason is a web-based interface. While some of these ISPs I'm sure do offer a web-based interface, it's probably pretty primitive and some of them don't offer it at all. Most other email services offer some sort of web-based interface and this can be very handy even if you check your email through the mail client on your Mac and say the mail client on your iPhone. Every once in a while you're at another computer or you're traveling and it's great to have that web-based interface to be able to access your email very easily even if your computers aren't around you. Now ISP email services often don't deal with spam very well either. Either they have no filters at all so you just get everything addressed to you including a ton of spam in your inbox or they filter some stuff out and you just don't happen to get email. A lot of problems even in the last year with ISPs filtering out newsletters and legitimate email from friends and you just never see it. With most modern spam filters it, things are put into a spam folder and you can look at it if you want to and they're very good at detecting spam. And a fifth and final reason is these email addresses don't look very professional. Now take it from me, a professional geek. When I see a business card or resume or something and it has an email address at the top that's from a cable modem or DSL service I immediately think that the person probably isn't very internet savvy. Which is probably a bad thing no matter what sort of job you're applying for or business contact you're trying to make. So having a email service that is more respected or having your own domain is a lot better than using one of these email addresses and putting it out there in the world. So what are the alternatives? Well there are tons of free email services. The biggest one that I would recommend is probably Gmail. It has all the features that I talked about before and it's pretty well respected. It has a great web interface. You can use it as IMAP across all your devices. Uh, it's pretty decent. Now another one you may want to look at is iCloud. Of course you get your at me.com email address which is independent of all the services. It has a pretty good web interface and in addition to showing that you may be a little more internet savvy than somebody who has a cable modem or DSL email address it also shows that you're an Apple user. Now there are plenty of other services as well. For instance Yahoo email is very popular but I don't like them so much because they charge for a lot of things that are free in other email service providers. And there are plenty of others out there so find one that meets your needs and switch to it. In addition you could go the route of getting your own domain name. So this costs a little bit because you have to register the domain name so about 10 bucks a year. Once you have it you can actually put the email service anywhere you want. You get your own server and pay for that or you could use a free service like for instance Google has Google Apps for Domains where you can basically have Gmail but add your own domain. So I hope you find this useful. Till next time this is Gary with MacMost Now. Want more video tutorials? Just go to MacMost.com, click on the videos link at the top of the page and then you can view all of the hundreds of MacMost videos by category.